I lost something I couldn't live without. My, my identity. identity. Hi, everybody. Long time no speaky. I hope that I look somewhat presentable. I legitimately cannot see that far. I'm here today to talk about something depressing. My life is not perfect. No one's life is perfect. I'm not perfect. But there is something I'd like to say. When I think about what I've learned and how I wish someone stepped in and helped me, it makes me think of you guys. I don't need to gatekeep. It's just the fact that like we grew up together and it feels like I'm talking to a bunch of like sisters really. Before I even knew that I had a bunch of sisters intrinsically for me, like I do feel like a big sister. With all my hardest life lessons, I learned them the hardest way. I didn't really have anybody uh, to look up to growing up. I didn't really have anybody who was setting like a standard besides my mother, but she didn't know the extent of my misery <laughs> and my degeneracy. It definitely would have been nice for someone to see what was going on and know what was going on and know how to help me help myself. And I, and I want to talk today long story fucking short, my eight hour long prefaces in recent times. I relate to and feel one with my child self more than I do with who I was four years ago. Night and fucking day since I've healed and I'm in better spirits and I'm in a better place. I'm in the best place. I remember more from my childhood. I remember ways that I felt at the time. I remember things that I wanted for myself. I just have more memories in general. I've been in a really good place now for quite some time. When I say I'm in a good place, what I'm communicating is I have a good relationship with myself. I'm communicating that when I look around me, I feel safe. I feel liked, <laughs> I feel understood, and I feel like people want what's best for me. I'm at an age and at a point in my life where like, I have figured some things out and I've drawn some serious conclusions that I feel like would benefit my viewership. I'm gonna try to go in a palatable order. This is a video talking about how I lost my identity. I lost something I couldn't live without. My identity. With every passing day, I was losing who I was and I was detaching myself from my roots and what I always wanted for myself and where I saw myself going all throughout my teenage years and my early 20s, which isn't the majority of my life, but it's a large chunk of my life. Thank God before it was too late, because we were at that breaking point, I somehow miraculously gained a fucking clue. I would like to discuss that. Let me introduce phase one, which is the retrospective analysis of my Alana because I'm in my 20s and I have the right to do so. When I'm talking about this very difficult subject matter, I am trying to set up a boundary with the internet, which obviously is not going to work, but at least I can do myself a solid. You're going to have to understand that hurt people hurt other people and there have been hurt people who have hurt me. Butterfly effect. I have fallen victim to um, things like my environment, uh, my choice of friends, matters of circumstance. When I say the word victim, I don't want to paint a picture like Either it was completely not my fault, or it was completely my fault. It turned me into a, a shittier version of myself. Um, I just want to recognize like the patterns here. I don't feel like a victim in my day-to-day -day life. I'm very good at moving on. That is a quality of mine that I very much enjoy. I'm very good at not holding grudges. It's very freeing, makes me not harbor negative emotions about things, and it opens the door for better things to happen, which is also a really big part of this video that we'll We'll get into. That being said, even though I'm good at moving on, I think something I always did struggle with and I was outspoken about was I'm very good at forgiving other people, but I am my harshest critic. The harshness towards myself, I feel like made me worse, like made me more poorly behaved. It wasn't the stepping stone you would think for me to become better. In my case, when I was really fucking hard on myself, and I didn't let my own shit go, or I was being exposed to people who wouldn't let me grow up in a way from my past, I was resorting to more forms 
like more perpetual forms of self-harm in ways. I kind of woke up one day and I was like, I just, I wasn't plagued by my past anymore. And I think that's because my present and my future became so much brighter. I was no longer being like fucking attacked by, snuck up on by my past. And the longer I went in a positive headspace and living a positive life, the less the negativity was even blooming. Like even with like people who were negative forces, they all just kind of shut up and went away. I found it easier to forgive myself for my messy years uh, when I realized that the messy girl was simply a product of trauma and abuse and being surrounded by people who just did not have my best interest in mind. That's the same girl, technically, as the little girl that I identify with so strongly now. I need to be gracious about myself as much as I am with other people. I've also learned how to do that via how I am currently treated, and this is the largest part of this video is you are who you surround yourself with. You are who you hang out with. You are a product of your environment. No matter how strong you are as an individual, no matter how much of a leader type you are, you will get consumed. Even me, and that goes to show, even myself, I was swept up in the chaos. Controlled chaos. <laughs> I started really viciously toxic cycles in my teenage years that no teenager should be a part of or have to experience. And I was always treated like I should know better or like I should have known better. I was like fucking 16. <laughs> there was no knowing better. Or at least if I knew better, I didn't know how to get out of it. When you're in toxic cycles of abuse, it's hard to get out of. Like half the time you're just like, eh. And I felt like that was my approach for everything. I was like, ah, I can handle it. Like it's whatever. Like there's people who have it worse than me. N no, Maya, it was bad for you. Like, it was bad. Uh, in return, that slowly started picking away at the character traits that made me a good person, made me a, a positive person, kept me out of trouble. Every passing day, I would end up in worse situations and in a worse spot psychologically. And then another big hit came, which was leaving New Jersey. I didn't want to. What could have just been like a fucking teenage dirtbag baby situation turned into the complete loss of self. When I moved to Maryland, I lost it. I was not entering an environment that understood me at all. I was locked away in my castle. And that isolation literally drove me mad. It drove me crazy. I was so desperate for a community like I had when I was growing up that I was looking in all the wrong places. I, well, technically I was looking everywhere and then I found myself in all the wrong places. When I was young, I was basically born into a tribe. I was an only child. Technically I wasn't, because you guys know I'm donor conceived, but I didn't know that. But I had a large family. I had a very involved mother. Uh, she was, and still is, the light of my life. That has stuck with me my entire life. I felt hopeless. I felt like all the dreams that I had when I was a child, they just died. I was like, my standards are, uh, what's it called? Like unrealistic. And then I found other hurt people who then we were all hurt together and it was just awful and terrible and toxic. I was getting to an age where I was like, this is fucking ugly. Then I was convinced to move to Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, let's go to the place where I literally fundamentally core value wise have nothing in common with the entire populace. And I'm already like a very damaged and broken person. Good idea. Horrible fucking idea. Horrible fucking idea. If you met me at that point in my life, I'm sorry. I was a six hour plane ride away from everybody who actually did give a fuck about me. That fucking affects people, especially me being an extrovert. I managed to piss off some of the most volatile people on the face of the fucking earth. Cringe word, but I was so bullied 
genuinely fucking bullied. Not like, oh, uh, I had a one-off instance with someone online and it was, and it was, it was fucked up. No, this was like unreciprocated harassment. I always was told to be the bigger person. For, in my case, being the bigger person kind of made things worse because I wasn't standing up for myself. I went from always standing up for myself and no one fucking with me to being the bigger person and people fucking with me. Tea. Everyone start jotting down these fucking ideas so that way I don't forget. So anyway, after all of that, I was a shell of a man. <laughs> and then I, I left Los Angeles still looking for my my people and missing my people so much because i didn't leave los angeles and go back to new jersey no i left los angeles and went back to the lair the dungeon the isolation fucking tank that was in fucking maryland and then i made the largest lapse in judgment because by that point i was where was my mind i went to the fucking internet to make friends Excuse me while I punish myself. What the fuck? Okay, so this is the kind of person I am. I am not meant to be an internet loser. I'm the kind of person who requires real life bonds. That's why I always do like meetups and shit too, because like I'm a very real life person. The only reason why I resorted to the internet is because there was no one around me in proximity and I didn't want to leave my mom especially after I went to Los Angeles I missed her so I wanted to be with my mom I went on the internet and I trusted a bunch of fucking strangers with the most vulnerable parts of me and yeah that made me worse in all these difficult points of my life it wasn't all bad I know this video is focusing on the negative but it wasn't all negative there were people that I met during that duration that I am still friends with to this day there are people that I met from the internet that I'm still friends with to this day i'm extremely thankful for them please separate that from the main subject matter of this video because i had great times even when chat.xo started it was some of the best fucking times of my life i have met some of my most favorite people from chat.xo it was good but it was also really fucking bad i'd also like to note shout out to all the people who saw me through all this Mwah, big kiss when it came to the whole internet thing it was the worst of it want to know why because it froze my ugly moments of my life in time and i've been saying that for years on youtube i didn't like the idea of making youtube videos what you now know is in my mind it was pausing me at a time where i didn't like what was going on in my life so it was pausing me at a place where i didn't want it to stay now I don't give a fuck. Now I'm back on the internet. I'm like, hey, like, I'm proud of where I'm at. Um, I'm proud of who I'm, I'm around, too. Pause me here, bitch. Pause me here. Like, this is what I want forever. Back then, so much of my dismay was everyone wants to watch a train wreck. And in a way, I was, I was behaving as so. And the inner parts of my life were a train wreck. But also, I think people forget that even though i'm very authentic back then especially it was a job to me like i was making money and i was more popular than i've ever been and i saw what people wanted to hear from me and then i would say and do it um to an extent i like who i am now and i don't give a fuck if it doesn't pull views i don't give a fuck if what i post doesn't pull fucking views when i went through chat.xo and i realized how much people wanted me to be a disaster <laughs> I don't think they meant it. I don't think a lot of people meant it, but like they wanted me to be a shit show. They wanted me to get blacked out. Bitch! They wanted me to go crazy on fucking on the internet and cuss and put on a character. And sometimes it was fun, but most of the time it was not. I got really sick and tired of the entertainment factor. I was getting to an age where like it just wasn't cute anymore. And I, I don't think it's ever really cute. I mean, that's the industry I'm in. Why do you think I'm not friends with anybody in the industry? Okay, I guess there really was a turning point. I am thinking like, try I'm trying to think concretely like when did things start to change? I realized the internet is not my friend. I was treating my support system online, support system, things like chat.xo and stuff, as one unanimous entity. It's not, it's an array of individuals with their own fucking motives and intentions. I needed to connect with individual people i started to slowly and as best as i can without being problematic or offensive i started gracefully bowing out of places and friendships and 
parasocial whatevers. I started learning how to protect my peace. And all of a sudden, I noticed things happening. It was almost like I was being rewarded for it. I was getting to a point where, I mean, I was always fucking pissed because throughout all these trials and tribulations, I was like, why am I so undeserving? Like, why can't I have like my person yet? Or why am I not with my people right now? And it's because I wasn't worthy. I wasn't behaving in a way that made me worthy of that. I was filling my space with negativity without even realizing it was negativity. Because for me, like, I always felt like I had unlimited source, but that's not true. It's just not true. It's not viable. The proof is in the pudding that it's not healthy and it's not good. Once I started redirecting that love into myself and worrying about myself and worrying about the people who were good to me, that is when I started being blessed with what I always wanted. I have like vivid memories of, of my child self imagining this life for me and I have it now. What has brought me back to who I was destined to be the most is my girlfriend. She saved me. She saved me. I have to go out later so I'm gonna try not to fucking start sobbing. So lucky lucky bitch just naturally good for me naturally encouraging what i would like to say is i'm just so eternally grateful for her i'm grateful for the people who got me to the point where i can be with her and i'm and i'm worthy of her and i take that really fucking serious and in the duration that I've been dating my girlfriend, holy fucking shit, like I have made leaps and bounds. You are who you hang out with and my girlfriend is a brilliant, beautiful woman and she makes me feel like I'm brilliant and that like I'm beautiful. So with all this being said, I want my support system to be able to say the same. You guys need to take your environment and the people who you were surrounded by with way more fucking seriously. And I know it might be easier said than done. Look, I wasn't always able to get out of things. I wasn't for all those years. I was fucking trapped. But make it a goal and make a point to Martel do ya. You know what I mean? Like, that's a fucking must have. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for letting me come on here and express my feelings. I'm gonna go. Have fun! EXO Love had a revamp lately, so if you want to join, now's the time. Thank you to all my patrons. I am recording my music video in the beginning of May. I have 40 songs coming out, and I'm writing an acoustic EP. So if you subscribe to my Patreon, that's where the money goes. Thank you guys so much, and I'm out this bitch. Bye, fatty!